You're listening to the Just Offside podcast uh, with me and my boy, Keith Makubia. And today we have a very special guest, someone a little different to what you may be used to. He's a football trainer and my guy is traveling around the world, currently in Mexico. And he's working and shooting with some big name pro players and some even bigger clubs. He's trained with male and female players from Man City to PSG to Everton, to Dorman, Boca Juniors, fucking you name it. Many more. <laughs> he's a former teammate of mine and competitor of mine and Keith. Mo Ali Hedapur. Welcome to the Just Outside Mo. podcast, bro. What's up, guys? It's an honor to be here. And... This is the only podcast I'm a fan of. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love that. I, I love a bad intro for you, bro. I honestly, I could. I was trying to write that shit, and I was like, man, I was looking up everything you're doing. I was like, this guy's been places, bro, all over the place. This guy. Yeah, man, it's been a crazy four or five years, bro. Four or five years. Before we would jump into those four or five years, let's take it back to the very start and your background i know you obviously on a personal level me and keith know you um i know you immigrated to canada when you were what six yeah six right so like what was that transition like obviously we don't remember everything when we're like that little but what was that transition like for you when you got to move and who kind of got you into football like when did you get into it yeah man so when i was Six, the family moved to Canada, small wow. town Guelph, where we went to college. Uh, Shout out Guelph. Oh, so you went right to Guelph? I didn't realize you went right to Guelph. They were in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. So from six years old, moved to Guelph, like small city compared to the other cities. Yeah. Like I didn't know English, nothing. You know, started from scratch. Bro. Just learn, played soccer at recess and stuff. Like True. I didn't even know what soccer was really like my grandpa was a player yeah true. played pro but myself i was just playing for fun you know and then around 10 11 like some people told me like there's a city team you know okay and i didn't even know what like this stuff was so i was like <laughs> all right let's go to the tryout <laughs> i was lucky you know like i made that like an a and b team so i made the a team the first year yeah and, of course you did yeah we had a coach like randy reagan yeah shout out randy yeah man so that was my first coach in canada and like he was good because he played in the world cup yeah canada the only time they went so at that age it was amazing to be coached by you know you learned a lot you were 11 uh 11 10 11 10 okay yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah, Randy. Randy was a good coach. He coached the the women's team while we were obviously at University of Guelph, and yeah. like you said, he was on the team that only Canada team that's gone to the World Cup. So, yeah. out of all the places where you could probably could have landed, that was a good spot to land, <laughs> a good coach to have when you're first coming. Yeah. For sure, man. I think I was lucky with that. So, did your parents like kind of push you into it, or were they just like, "Yeah, go do your thing, whatever you want." Yeah, I was just doing my own thing, you know. My parents never really pushed me. Like, they they signed me up for, like, track and field instead of soccer. <laughs> I was track and field and, like, some random stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was my school friends who said, like, let's go for the soccer team. Okay. And that's how it did. But, yeah, man, those were good times. I have a crazy story, too. Like, when we were playing in the beginning, I just yeah. had shoes, you know. So... I didn't even know you had to wear cleats for the games. <laughs> so I was playing with indoor shoes in the like U12 league. And after like three games, the ref told me like, do you have cleats? I was like so confused. I didn't even speak English. <laughs> <laughs> like I got subbed out to like take someone's cleats. It was crazy. <laughs> three games as well. Well, the ref didn't want to say it in the first two, eh? Yeah, man. Just waited till the third. How much back then, <laughs> <laughs> bro? That's crazy because, like, just like that little story, like you said, from not having football boots and soccer shoes and being told to like getting 
sponsors and like brands sending you shoes yeah like that is yeah, that's crazy that's a yeah. crazy gap and to think that was like when you were like 11 12 we're thinking yeah. what maybe not even 20 years and like that kind of thing happened so that's actually a really dope story <laughs> so let, let's take it to when 2012 2012 is when we meet we meet maybe in 2011 going into 2012 yeah. but we were obviously rookies together at the university of guelph Shout out Keith Mason for bringing us on and playing together. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit, but we're in England, which is crazy story for me. And especially for you when you were visiting a couple of weeks ago, we're in England in 2012. It's me, you and Jared Adjuman. Shout out Jared in a hotel room, sharing our hotel for the week. And you look at us and you just go, I think I'm going to make videos for YouTube. <laughs> <We're> like, what? <laughs> what? So look at, looking back at that scenario and like that moment, like obviously that was something that you had been thinking about, about making the videos. Like, and we were teammates. Like how, like the time before were you thinking about actually making the videos? Yeah, man. Crazy times, good times. Uh, so the videos, it started maybe in like grade nine or eight, but it, okay. it, like messing around, you know, I got a camera as a present and just like set it down sometimes, take some free kicks. And then more when I met and met with you guys in college and stuff, I think you saw me like recording some stuff. Sometimes I called you up to do like a shoe review one time. I do remember. And, and so in college, I started more of the YouTube stuff. Yeah. And that's where it like started taking off. But it, there was no direction yet. It was just like, I want to do YouTube videos, but I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm just making random stuff, tutorials, shoe reviews, free kicks. It was all over the place, you know? Okay. And then my idea was like how can i be a pro player and also do youtube so that was the goal you know to play pro soccer and be a youtuber at the same time yeah after guelph when i had the chance to go to slovakia i went there for a bit and like we never had days off like maybe one or two times a month so in between those times we were trying to shoot stuff but it was hard man you're tired when you're a professional player <laughs> Just want to chill out, bro, after training. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how long were you in Slovakia for again? Slovakia was six months around there. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, around there. And then uh, it was good. It was the Premier League level. FC Vion was the team. And we were, like, not the best team, but, like, mid-table, I would say. Maybe a bit lower. Okay. But there were some like problems in the club and stuff, so it didn't work out. And then I went to Bosnia for a month after that. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> the crazy countries. With the CSL connections to Bosnia. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and also, I think like we were lucky to have that, even though it folded. Like that was such a good thing back in the time. Oh, that league? It was, bro. Yeah, for guys, for, I think like for guys like us, it was great because we weren't really at like that level, whereas like someone like Keith was in the academy at TFC and getting those opportunities. And like the CSL at that time was like the alternative. There for was sure. no League One. There was no. Anything yeah, else. we had nothing, bro. But the for quality sure. of the quality of teams and players in the league at that time was crazy. Yeah, there so the, many I, good, I, so many good players. Yeah. Like, before that league existed, playing, like, city soccer, provincial soccer, the level was never, like, that, at least our team, you know? Because yeah. all our players came from Europe, like, first, second division players. Yeah. And, like, it was nothing compared to the provincial level or something like that. And it was men. We were playing, like, we yeah, were playing, playing against men. men. Like, those, like, 28-year-old, yeah. 30-year-old guys that were, like, good yeah. players. For and sure, man. really experienced that. Yeah, it's funny that we all played in that league, man. <laughs> Crazy, bro. It's funny that you bring up that uh, the shooting and doing the shoe review. I gotta ask quickly, it ten. Yeah, the original name. Yeah, 
still have those videos in the vault somewhere saved. Yeah, yeah, they're on a hard drive somewhere. So, <laughs> we'll have to pull it up someday and go through them. <laughs> we need to pull that up, Keith. We shot a shoe review um, for the Adidas Nemesis, I believe. <laughs> that were those shoes that came out. And I had one <laughs> pair, and me and Mo were just going into the field house and just constantly just going in and just swapping shoes. And we shot there for like two hours. <laughs> We need to find that video, Mo. You got to dig that out. For sure, bro. I'll send that over when I find it. <laughs> Amazing. So you're with ITZ. Obviously, you said after like the pro and then it doesn't work out and then you fully transition into making the full videos. How long did it take you to like fully transition and get like lose? When did you lose the name like IT10 and then just make it fully Mo Ali? Oh, yeah. That was around after when I came back from Slovakia. Okay. Uh, uh, my plan was to go back to Europe and keep playing. But when I was injured, I just started making more videos, which grew, which grew more fans. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was in Boston. So we had an MLS team, the New England Revolution. Yeah. So I just hit up some players there, you know, like the first guy we filmed with was Kai Kamara. He was playing there at the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he was like the first yeah. professional you, you uh, did a video with? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. First, like back then, we were nothing, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't know how many thousand followers, but he was down, you know, he came out hour, two hours. We were just chilling, like passing, shooting, like trick shots. <laughs> and just from that, you got inspired, you know, and you're yeah. excited. You know? At that time, it was like no one was shooting too much with players and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think a cool market to go training at clubs and showcasing other players teams and leagues and like that was interesting yeah. i actually remember that video because i feel like you, both of you guys were both wearing like all white adidas track suits yeah yeah and we yeah, didn't as that he showed up in his <laughs> 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 yeah right case that actually like goes perfectly into the next question i had for you because i've shown a lot of people your page and a lot of people obviously see your page and i think one of the first things that they probably think of is like how do you think of these drills to get these players to do and like maybe two parts like how do you actually even think about it and come up with these drills yeah so probably the day before the session we just think of it like visually or write it down and it depends on the player too like, like what position they are and how much technical skill they have you know if we're shooting a center back we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna be shooting volleys and stuff <laughs> <laughs> although i'm sure they want to <laughs> yeah, yeah they love it but they'll be there for three hours you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but just from like visualizing the drill and what looks good in a small space, because like, yeah, you can do like super like game types skills that are like far driving passes or like switching the ball, stuff like that. But it also needs to look good for camera. Mm -hmm. So you have to think like what, what looks good in a small space looks fun for the fans and it's technical and the player likes it, you know? And like yeah, the, more, the more you do it, it's just, it becomes easier. Now you can like plan a session in five, 10 minutes, like easy. And I think for those guys, cause it's so different from what they're doing their everyday training. Like you got the creative little aspects. I see you doing a lot of stuff. So I think they enjoy it. They enjoy doing that kind of things with you. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. For them, it's amazing mentally yeah, too. It's different. Switch it up. Yeah, that's cool that you're thinking about that because obviously when you're first making them and like you said, like the spaces, how it looks on camera, like how long did it make you, like did it take to realize, okay, like this actually looks really good on camera. A lot of people like it. The players like it. We'll just like repeat one of these. Whereas like some of them, did some of them where you're like, no, we're not doing those ever again. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, it's always changing, you know, the yeah. trend, what looks good, what works, what doesn't. Like sometimes three years ago, one drill might have like got millions of views, but now mm -hmm. that same, it, it doesn't uh, trend or go viral. Yeah. 
So you always have to think of like new drills, ideas, and you got to just test it out. You know, it's weird. Some you think that might do really good. They end up poorly for some reason. And like, no matter what you try, change it up. It doesn't work. <laughs> Was there anyone like you kind of took inspiration from when you're trying to look and find these new drills and like kind of put your spin on it? Is there somebody that you would suck uh, or something? Maybe like random times you see something. You see like, something and then you like put your yeah. little, your spin onto it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you get inspired from everyone, you know? Yeah. Like Pep Guardiola, he's done some like nice drills. Uh, but then you just do it differently in a tighter space or mm -hmm. up. But yeah, everyone's always like getting inspired, you know? I see yeah. even like coaches at Atletico Madrid doing the reaction games we're doing or tic tac toe. Yeah. Everyone gets inspired from everyone, you know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Because I was going to say, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, like, do you ever say to a player, like, oh, we're going to do this and set something up? And, like, do they all typically respond well to it? Or do some of them just go, like, nah, I don't want to do that? Yeah. I mean, 99%. I can remember maybe one or two times where the player was so tired. He was like, can we switch this one up? <laughs> but 99%, they're always down to that's cool. Yeah. That is they dope. Like, okay, if we do this, it's going to perform well also, you know, so they yeah. just trust. So. That's sweet. Obviously, as your, your videos build up and you get the catalog and everybody's seeing everything and they can go to your page and they see who's been there, that obviously helps as well. Yeah, for sure. Now well, it's I was going to ask, I was going to say to you, Obviously, from the start, you said at the very beginning, like when you were messaging Kai Kamara and you said, like, oh, we didn't have that many followers and it was tough to get people. Can you maybe just talk to us as early podcasters and getting guests and bringing people on? How has it changed from the very start to where yeah. you're at now in terms of getting guests? Like what is the approach changed or is it just what is it? Talk, talk to us. Yeah, for sure. So when I was first messaging... I was inexperienced. I was like writing one or two sentences like, hey, bro, we should do this. I'll be here, blah, 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 saying too much. You know? And now I just say, all I say is like, hey, or hey, bro. And that's that gets the most response, you know. <laughs> Less is more from Bo Ali. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, just, you just message and say, hey, bro, and usually – but obviously, like you said, like the amount of people that you get on the guests, the amount of followers, like how much does that help? Oh, it helps a lot. Like now it's super easy for us. Yeah. Like we can always get a player anytime, like almost any team, I would say. Like just depends on their training schedules and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like I think like almost all the players have seen the videos. Like even Ronaldo, Neymar, I know they've seen the videos because they're agents and stuff. They've shown it to them. And mm. so everyone's aware now, you know. So when I hit a lot of players up, they already know what it is and they set it up. They're like, come to the training pitch, I'll grab the jerseys and we'll do it. You, you said, I hear you saying like us. What, how big is your, the team that you work with, the people? Uh, it's, just, it's me and my one friend. He films everything. Oh, okay. So just yeah. two of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bro, talk to us about that. Because when, when I asked you this a couple of weeks ago, and you told me it was just the two of you, and then you told me how you actually make the videos and do that, I think yeah. you need to tell people how you actually make these videos. Because I told Keith as well, and maybe just people listening, when they go and check it out and see it. How are you making this video? What are you shooting on? So it's super simple, man. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> And just use the iPhone video shop app, and that's all you need. That's it. Everything on your phone. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, if you're going to do YouTube, I recommend, like, shooting on two cameras. Then you, Yeah, different angles, right? Yeah. But, yeah, man, for, like, the majority, the phone is perfect. And all the apps are favoring the phone shot content. Right, right. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. yeah when he told me that keith i was like what yeah i didn't think so either on your phone. I, like, i'd seen all the videos it's like oh it's probably got like a nice crazy <laughs> camera Obviously, yeah. the iphone cameras are getting better now too so it's crazy though and then you exactly. edit it on there too like you're not even on your macbook or anything 
<laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's funny sometimes when I'm in different countries, mm-hmm. I see the trainers with like all the equipment, the yellow skills equipment, and like full setup. They have like three cameras set up, and like they 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 also think it's like the nice cameras, you know. Yeah. So we have- to tell them like you just need the iphone <laughs> and you you doing the editing yourself yeah i do the editing myself oh, yeah Crazy. yeah it's super you, simple you were telling me everything is pretty much like you take all the time because you do all the editing that typically when you go to a certain place how long yeah. after that like when you're in a place how long does it take for that video to come out so it depends how much content we have if we have no content we might put it out the next day or next two days but if we have a few teams lined up it could be a week a month sometimes two months we're so ahead really? so, yeah but we try and like put it out while we're in that country if we can because mm-hmm. it performs better while you're in right. that country while you're still there yeah but yeah, man, we try and also build up, you know, so we can have some free time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even those nice vacations, man. Yeah. Let's talk like numbers then, because obviously you're following the trends and you're following the numbers of the videos and how many viewers you're getting. When did you start like clocking in and like how did you start figuring out how videos would be successful? Like you yeah. said, like, like how, how do you how do you start to get to understand that? So right now, what I do is test the videos first on TikTok. Okay. So when, when we go do a session, we do seven or six drills. And that's six or seven videos. And we test those seven on TikTok. And then the, the best performing three on TikTok will add to Instagram. And from mm-hmm. like patterns and trends you see like which type of content looks good like maybe when the player is close to the camera and it's a reaction drill mm-hmm. that performs better so next time maybe we do that drill but add something else to it so it's a new drill but still that same effect wow so tiktok's your training ground yeah tiktok i know <laughs> on facebook now you can test too so you can select like auto smart preview on facebook when you're posting and it generates like the image that the AI thinks will perform best the first three seconds. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm like to think, man, you started this when did what you 2012? Yeah. And to think so how like crazy and social media has gotten over the last 10 years. It's almost like the perfect time for you to be doing this. Yeah, for sure, man. Really? It's always going, you know, you have to keep up. Like with TikTok, you know, so many people didn't want to start at first. Yeah. Like, all my friends, they, they wouldn't make TikTok. No players wanted to make TikTok. Everybody's <laughs> on that, bro. That's crazy, man. Yeah, man. man. It blows my mind. So I think you talked about it a little bit. Obviously, when you're shooting now, you're just using a phone. So what do you think's changed with you in terms of shooting videos from the start? from when you kind of first started with players to like now? Yeah, I think now it's more proper and like professional. Sometimes when I look back at the videos, it's funny what we were doing. (laughs) (laughs) Like, damn, we were so stupid. Like, (laughs) (laughs) And, but yeah, man, I think now we like, we're more self-aware what we're doing and trying to keep it professional, like working with clubs, players, and we don't post like everything you know it's more professional so we can keep working with the clubs and players and just we learned a lot you know the more you do content the more you learn and even yeah. the now i'm gonna look back in five years and say uh it was shit Probably then, right? yeah. <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself bro on. <laughs> so then i have this question because obviously we're putting we're starting in the process of putting things out there and trying to like figure things out what would be your like key advice to someone who's kind of just starting off and putting things out there on socials what would be your advice i would say go hard on tiktok right now because that's that's the place you can grow the fastest and say you're doing a podcast 
I would just cut up like three, four viral moments in vertical format, yeah. add some subtitles to it, and just start it with like a one, two, three second like uh, controversial topic, you know? Yeah. Just try and grow on TikTok right now. And you can link to Spotify, whatever your TikTok. Uh, okay. Got some tips there, Keith. Do you imagine us on TikTok? Every like three videos, we'll do a dance. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get the viral moments, man. That's hilarious. Okay. That actually takes it like perfectly kind of into the next talking point that I wanted to have with you. Cause when the pandemic hit, I know you started your podcast. So yeah, and it was called Pro Talk. Yeah, you maybe just talk to us about that. Like, what what made you do it? Yeah, man. So we were home, you know. We're saying, how can we shoot some content, and how can we work with players around the world we can access? So the only way was a podcast from your house, and that was the best method. So we just went on IG Live. We had the fans already on Instagram, right. so I think that was good for them, but. We want to start the podcast again too, like, uh, but do it more like YouTube format and just yeah. landscape. This one we'll shoot with like quality cameras. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Have you ever thought of doing uh, like when you go to these places and you're with these these um, these players, like to do with podcast form too, or just have like a behind the scenes, maybe doing a little interviews with them too? Is that something yeah, yeah. you do as well? Yeah. Next goal is to keep doing more like youtube content yeah. like the vlog style and the podcast mm-hmm. so who next picks to grow on but it's also tough you know because we train one or two hours with the players and then do another 40 minute talking with them everyone's yeah. tired you know? yeah so you gotta like you want to do the podcast or the training yeah it's true but but maybe we'll do it the next day the podcast you know yeah 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 do you enjoy doing it yeah man that's fun you know traveling and meeting other people that's the most fun like meeting with players and when you're on the pitch you're just doing fun stuff you know mm-hmm. yeah and you're, you're not doing nothing you don't like like running and all this stuff <laughs> so so that's dope. I'm actually glad because I was going to ask you, like, if you if you wanted to continue doing the pod or if it was just kind of the lockdown, just needing to put things out and doing it. But I'm glad that you, you want to keep that going and that you enjoy doing that because that's dope. Um, yeah. For- if you have a pod and we're all in the same city, we're all going to go on it. You're going to run some drills for me and Keith. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be hilarious, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. I touched the ball in so long, but, you know, class is permanent. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, I could my- def- some of those half volley ones i could definitely put those in there. Oh, those yeah, ones that you do well i could definitely do those those are the only yeah. ones where i watch and i'm like i can do that one <laughs> i mean there'll yeah. be a few probably out of the stadium before you get a good <laughs> yeah, one yeah 100% <laughs> <laughs> we'll be we'll be taking up like seven hours of most time <laughs> to shoot the video but that takes us to i mean there's perfect segues all about this cuz if we wanted to and we did have something to set up you have an app, Mo, and we could yeah. we could train on your app. Can you just talk to us about the the app and where did you come up with this idea, bro? Yeah, so this was a quarantine idea too. <laughs> the, People like, were getting creative, man. You had to. Yeah, everyone was training at home, you know, and we wanted to make something to reach as many people as possible and things you could do at home. So that's when we created it and. We have bigger goals for the app, you know. I want to give, like, the members more benefit, maybe, like, game tickets or, like, access, like, one-on-one or, like, I don't know know the NFT space, but people are giving, like, benefits if you hold, like, an NFT card. So maybe if they're app members, then we can give them some benefits, you know. Whatever country they're in, connect them with a player to go to a game one time or fun things like that. That's dope. So the training, is it like training with a ball or is it training off the ball? Like what type of drills could we possibly see on that app? Yeah, it's more with the ball, but there's some like fitness stuff too. Like I think I got three, four players to do programs there. Like oh, one Galaxy guy, Montreal Impact player, Toronto FC guy. 
So they also did a program for me that I put on the app. Oh, and, dope. and that's just fitness. So that stuff you can do at home to keep fit. It's also really great. So I, I asked you this, but I want to, I want people to know you're doing all these videos and you're doing everything. What are you doing to stay in shape? So me, I'm trying to just gym one hour a day when I can, you know, like almost every day, but like days we're traveling a lot. It's tough, you know, maybe yeah. go to the hotel, lift some suitcases, whatever you have. Some- <laughs> <laughs> just use whatever, you know, home gym, yeah. but just one hour a day, you know, I think that's enough for me. Wow, that's good. Keith, I mean, we're, we're interested because obviously I've known you for ages and this question I got for you is, is, is thinking big and it's, it's thinking down the line. And I've seen your growth from day one all the way up and it's been amazing. And I need to know now, and I think the people listening as well is what are you trying to do? Like, what's the next step or what's the plan or like, what's your five-year plan? Yeah. Where you take it where are you taking Mo Ali and what are you going to be doing? So next step, like first thing, work with the biggest players, you know, mm. like every day be working with like a big name player. Like I'll give you an example. Like two weeks ago, we got a message from Tony Cruz at Real Madrid. Wow. And he starting his app in Academy. So he saw what we were doing. So he wanted to collaborate. So maybe February we go there, shoot a session with him. That'd be unreal. That's one of the biggest players we shot with, you know. But the goal is to get like big name players like that, like we did Luis Nani, Demba Ba, like players with a bigger name. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. always just be around the best players and doing training and content. And then the next thing, obviously, like the podcast I want to grow to, because yeah. you know. And apart from that, maybe buy a club eventually. Okay, like, really? Yeah, I was looking like you can buy a third division club in England for around two, three million. So, yeah, man, maybe a future adventure. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, you got time for it. You got wow. this time to keep building an empire. For sure, bro. Let's but see. The- things to do in soccer you know you can do anything in soccer yeah that's amazing but i love to hear that as well damn mo my guy doing numbers my guy doing bits (laughs) (laughs) i think it's all crazy like i I try and wrap my head around it like obviously all of us boys like when i talk to to jared and i talk to other boys that we played with and even just like linking up with you like it's just crazy to see it's so dope to see it's so dope to see. But we're going to go into our, our quick hitters, man. Our quick hitters. So all the guests that we have, we typically ask them to build a 11-a-side team. But since, yeah. you're the, since you're the skilly guy, since you're the techie guy, and you do all of that, I want yeah. you to build and create a 5-a-side team okay. just based off of the players that you've trained with. Okay, okay. So let me think. <laughs> for sure i would have luis nani in there for for the ball work his feet yeah. his feet are so that fast was, that one was recent no a few months ago yeah yeah, yeah. Luis nani, like super technical fast player one of the quickest i've seen with the ball like so light on his feet and then next i would have as a defender christian fuchs the former leicester city player okay legend yeah and then in the middle i would have podens from wolves oh shit. he's a baller I like yeah Podence. he's also one of the most technical like super small guy smallest guy probably in the premier league yeah really he can he's nice. so like him. with the ball that mm-hmm. striker let me think uh, am I the coach? Am I off the field? <laughs> Bro, you're off the field. You're not playing. <laughs> uh, let me see. Striker. I would add Gokhan Inler from Ooh. 
Napoli and Leicester City also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good show. He's wow, he was yeah. great at his time. I forgot about him. Yeah. And then other striker, I put Calvert Lewin from Everton. I like that. Because yeah. you shot with it, you shot with him when he was kind of like before he's kind of reached the stage that he's at now. Yeah, and yeah. Now he's become like a a lot lot bigger and regular first team and with England. So yeah, yeah, that's sure. that's a good one. Yeah. So and your I keeper, would... you shot with loads of keepers, man. Who is yeah. your keeper? Uh, I, I can't remember right now which keeper. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put like, yourself in goal? Yeah, bro. I'm putting myself. <laughs> Actually, recently, in Vogo, I don't know if you know in Vogo, he was, he's at PSV right now. Oh, really? And good. Played for young boys, Swiss national team. Uh, he was one of the big keepers. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take that. Okay. So that's your five aside team. We got that. That's a pretty good five aside team. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that. Okay. I think I know this because you told me this, but I, I want you to. Your your one of your funniest travel stories. Funniest travel stories. What did I tell you? <laughs> you, you told me about that one in Italy. So that's a great story. Uh, I mean, if you want to say that one, I remember this one. So <laughs> we're in Italy. This was recent too, like maybe two or three months ago. Yeah. We're just driving in Italy. I don't even have my license. I have my. <laughs> Just driving with my G1 around in Italy. <laughs> and uh, it's me and my boy. You know, I'm a brown guy. He's Asian, Chinese. <laughs> There's some racism in Italy. <laughs> so they stop us. And I was scared, you know. I was I was ready to go to jail there and cancel the show. We were heading to Udinese. Or no, Spezia. We saw with Udinese the last okay. day. Yeah. So they pull us over, checking IDs, everything. And there was three of them. And they saw the bag in the back seat. We had like soccer stuff. And they were like, Are you guys football fans and stuff? Or like, Yeah, yeah. And then he saw the jersey, like Udanese jersey. And I was like, Yo, you can have this. You know, I was trying to give anything to get out of it. <laughs> And like he was, he was so happy. I gave him the Udinese jersey, and he was so excited. And then the two other police came, and they took other jerseys. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> and like so, there was three police taking jerseys from us, and then let us free. And then they were they were just following us on Instagram, <laughs> like, taking pictures with you. <laughs> yeah, so we ended up having like good security in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> How amazing is that? That is Holy. hilarious. Yeah, man, that's that such a crazy. good story. And that the <laughs> fact that the fact that that could potentially like happen quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. I think they were just surprised, you know, like someone in that in that place with like a million followers driving with no <laughs> training. <laughs> it was a weird story for them too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's too much, bro. Um that's hilarious because that takes it to like where's your your best memory from your travel so far like certain locations places where, where's your like best best memory best memory it's tough to choose but like for instance i like asia a lot we went to bali they have some yeah. of the islands beaches pools like best scenery and playing there on a pro club it's amazing you know it's like you're on vacation playing pro football yeah. yeah, and I don't know. Spain was nice, like Barcelona. Going to Camp Nou. Um, there's a lot, man. Like it's hard to choose. True. I was gonna say even possibly because I remember we we tried linking up at the World Cup because you were in Russia for the World Cup as well. Like, didn't that you was, think it was? Didn't you think it was kind of crazy that you were at a World Cup final as well? It was crazy, man. Like you don't you don't feel like you're at the final until later, you know? Because just yeah. feel like game again and after you're like it's the World Cup final, you see the highlights on TV. <laughs> but the final was a bit weird, you know, like so many fans and it was a crazy final. 
Yeah, I really want to. Talk, I want. To, I don't want to talk about the final. Two lay, 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 lay. Do you have any Mo? Do you have any plans for for Qatar or even Canada twenty twenty six? Like, are you looking that far ahead for stuff to do at World Cups? With yeah, for sure. Or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be there for sure. I yeah, think. Qatar. Yeah, and then hopefully, maybe even this time, do sessions with teams during the World Cup, maybe. So I think that would be something new, you know. That'd be crazy. That would yeah. be that would be nuts, really. That'd be really cool though if you were able to get them at that yeah. time to like have a little bit of time. But I think, bro, if you're thinking about the podcast, that'd be amazing for you to be there and talk yeah. to those guys in Qatar. For sure. And they have time like after in the hotel, so that would be so much easier to do. And you could get a bunch of players there. A bunch of them, they're all there, right? Yeah, because they're all there. It kind of takes them away from the stress of everything. Maybe just low key. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all of those countries have like people that go to those ones, and they like they're like the national team corresponders and communicators, and they all sit with them anyway. So if you reach out to those guys and then got in, that'd be easy. That'd be yeah, that's a good idea. For sure, bro. That's a good one because even like like Keith said, with the World Cup coming to Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. in the next couple of years. You have a big part in that. Yeah. That's going to be a crazy one. Like, oh, I so, can't wait for that one. Like, the first kind, like that. For us to experience here, the first, like, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, man. It will be nice. So good. So, we obviously talked about some of the stadiums that you have been to and that you have, like, seen and experienced. But what's your dream stadium to shoot at? dream stadium to shoot maybe uh it's a random one but it's in iran really uh, called the azadi stadium it's like 113 or 110,000 capacity wow no way yeah not too many people know about it but it's like a red versus blue derby there okay. and, like, and like my bad <laughs> uh, like fans go crazy there they're like hanging off light poles and like no one even has a seat you know everyone's just all over the place <laughs> and it's a wow. it's a wild derby like you should look look later like some videos but obviously like the derbies are like like boca juniors river you been, yeah, i was gonna ask you've been down there no yeah yeah we've seen yeah. a boca Juniors game that's also amazing like the yeah. fan here you just feel different when you're there so South America is different, 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 yeah. different. Yeah. That's it's mine. sort of real, you know? I don't know if yeah. you're safe or not. But yeah, you're I know. I don't know if my black ass will be going down there, but <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> yeah. What think... about a uh, dream player to shoot with? Obviously, you were talking about it a little bit earlier, of like getting bigger names and doing whatever. Who's who's your guy or who's your target right now that's at the top of your list? Top of the list, I would say Ronaldo, like for sure. But yeah, a shoe with Maras, you know, because he's so technical. And Maras would be sick. That'd be a cool collab to do with him because you could do some of the most technical stuff, I feel, with him. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah. You guys would look like twins, bro. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Some of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> But just on the Mara's second page, <laughs> yeah, man. I need to lose some more pounds and then I'll be close. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. The comment crazy like so many Mara's comments when I post a video, just yeah. from from far with the hair, it looks yeah. similar. So, but man, yeah, I've, man. I've also seen you collab with some like people out of out of uh, the soccer, but I saw there's a tennis player. The yeah, you had done stuff with, and then there's some further kickboxers or UFC fighters I saw. Yeah, man. So that was back in the day a bit, like two, yeah. three years. Would you want to venture out and do it with other sports as well going forward with yeah. other guys? Testing it out, you know, creating yeah. like fun content like with NBA players, NFL players, yeah. box players, uh, just trying to mix it up. But now yeah. it's more like teams and pro players. Soccer, yeah, Pacific. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff I said. Like, uh, I wish I didn't do that stuff. <laughs> that was some of it. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, you were what throwing like alley oops to was it Prince from Atlanta or whatever? Tarion Prince? Yeah, I'm, uh, Tarin Prince. Tarin Prince, yeah, that's it. Norman Powell from Toronto at the time. I don't know if oh, he's nice. still I remember those. Yeah, he's at Portland now. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. Um, I guess Keith, you had a couple, right? A couple that you want to ask? It was like most techie, most technical player you've, uh, you've been with. I would say recently with. Podence. He was one of the most him or Nani. Yeah. yeah. But but Podence was, I think, better, bro. Because really? some of the drills I, I gave him, like he was doing it first time. Like all the players they mess up like For first. Time? Time. Yeah. But this guy, bro, he was First time, perfect. And we did the drill three, four times. Every time he got it. Man, that's wild. So then, could you could you talk to us? Can you tell us, or is it is it not safe to say who was the, the worst technical player that you shot with? <laughs> the worst technical player? Yeah, you want to start uh, some controversy. We're looking to make that first TikTok video, Mo. <laughs> I'll tell you, but don't cut this one up. <laughs> <laughs> So, funny story, like when we went to Dortmund the first time, we worked with Hakimi, who's at yeah. PSG now. And it was surprising, like you would think like he'd be amazing, but technically he just looked like he wasn't there, like it was his brother or something. <laughs> <laughs> and like he was just doing like juggles, just dropping the ball or like jumping from his knees to the feet but look like unathletic for some reason yeah really but no shots fired but like he's a sick player you know but <laughs> hey some guys be, be like that for some guys bro they might not be that, but put them in the field and can't touch them yeah like amazing player one two touch speed he has long arms bro like he Slanky. can just arm out <laughs> yeah and then we got one. Um, obviously, Mo, you remember meeting my flatmate Joel uh, when you came to visit over here in London. Um, he yeah. wanted me to ask because he's been watching all the videos as well on Twitter and just seeing what you're posted. And he's dying to know, like, how many takes does it take? Like, what's the the most amount of takes it's taken someone to do one of those videos? Yeah, from one take to 150, maybe. <laughs> so. Oh, depends. I'm trying to think the longest one. Um, there was a long one actually with Gokhan Inler in Turkey. Yeah. And he did a two hour training session and then we did a three and a half hour session after that. <laughs> Jeez. He's a perfectionist. So he wanted to shoot like two or three goals in a row but like a hard driven shot and the ball can't hit the ground and the nets were like 20, 30 yards out. And like he kept, he kept hitting one or two and missed like one. And when there was a ball in the background, he was so frustrated. He would run to get the ball out. Like he did like so much. I think he got sick the next day after training. Cause like he just overkilled himself, but he, He's, that guy's a perfectionist, you know? Yeah. And I think we went, like, one hour for that, like, just to hit those shots. And I told him, like, we can change it, you know? He's like, no, he, like, you know, players, they want to hit something. And mm. it's all about, like, your ego. So you don't want to stop. <laughs> of course, bro. That's actually wild. Yeah. Um, he'll be, bro, he'll be bro, pleased. He won, he won every league that he went to, Gokhan. He won Switzerland. Italy with Napoli, Leicester City, Premier League, Turkey, mm. best. So every team he's been at, he's won the league. He's won the league. That's yeah, it's actually quite a trophy rack he's got. That's dope. Yeah, that's good. Um, Keith, do you have any other quick hitters? Or are we all good? No, I think we're good. Bro, Mo, I honestly, we both appreciate you coming on and taking some time while you're in Mexico City to uh, to chat with us. So we appreciate you, bro. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. It was a good talk catching up. Yeah, man. Hope the fans enjoy too. And we'll kick it next time. Of course. So before you go, obviously, anybody that's listening, if you want to check out the app, the app is called Pro Talk. You can find it on Spotify and on Apple Pods. Yeah, yeah. Spotify. Okay, sweet. 
So you can find Pro Talk and you can find the app. What do we call it? What do you call the app? It's just the Moali FC app. Moali FC Moali. app. Go find yeah. that. And then, I mean, Follow if you're not people. one of the millions following them on Instagram, if you're not one of the four million people following them on TikTok, Go and follow the guy and uh, show some love on those videos. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. And see you soon. Much love. Another episode of the Just Offside podcast. Later. Later.